Hey, uh, this is Alex. I make a lot of the Code Club videos uh, that have been going up online financial libraries uh, over the summer. Um, and we're going to give you a quick show of uh, some of the program languages and stuff that we've been doing. So you get a rough idea of what each of the ones are um, as you encounter them. Um, so we'll start with the Code Club webpage, and you'll see this is what we've run through at the moment. We've run through all the Scratch programs. Um, we're doing um, something called Microbit down there at the bottom. Um, but you can have a look at these and get a sense of what each of them are, but I'll just run through them real quick. Scratch is our big one that we learned the most of, so you'll see it here. Uh, it's kind of like a... Uh, it's built out of these little blocks, so it's kind of like a Lego kind of construction, so you you pick them from the side, so you say if you want to add sounds or something, you go to the sound section and add them in. Um, so this project, for instance, we built this, uh, and it's this whole like boat race thing. Um, so I'll explain it a little bit, uh, all of this block here, uh, determines the whole game. Uh, we drew this, so it's like, uh, we drew brown for walls, blue is like the surface of the water, uh, and yellow is the species area of sand, which is a goal. And so we programmed it here, so depending on what this boat, uh, sprite here, which is a little, uh, object there, Depending on what that touches means different rules. So if you touch brown, you lose. If you touch the sand, you win. Uh, so really, it was just coded to change things based on what color you pressed. Um, and we have it. So here, um, it's always pointing towards the mouse pointer. So that's how you would control the ship. Uh, and it moves one step per... Or it moves the number of... That's on the top there. So it moves one of those a second, essentially. Um, but we figured this, so we changed that to control it. So on the up and down keys, you actually can see it on the left flash as we change it. So we organized it. So before it just went like this and it was very slow when we just said move one speed set. But this, you can change it so it goes up if you press the up arrow and goes down in speed if you hit down arrow. Also goes in reverse if you hit it more times, and then it explodes if you hit a wall. Um, so Scratch is a very cool, very begin um, beginner language, just to learn like a lot of things, but not have to worry too much about the actual code itself. Um, like I've been learning this as I've been doing the tutorial videos. Um, but it's a good basis for other things. Uh, the next thing we can have a look at is uh, the micro bit. So micro bit Programming is very, very similar. It's, again, these Lego block things. Um, but it's, um, the thing with the micro bit editor is you can actually see... So we're, we've got all these blocks here. Um, but you can see, if you click this, it converts all the code into this language called JavaScript. So everything's... These blocks aren't a language in themselves. They're just an easy way to program stuff. But if you coded it in JavaScript, you could actually write the code um, itself. But also, more interestingly, you can make a project here, and then you could click over the JavaScript and see what it looks like. Uh, so microbits, uh, if we make a little project here, I'm actually going to actually going to show you something while I can, um, just to demonstrate it. I'm going to make a quick, very easy uh, step counter. It's like you know, like a Fitbit sort of thing. Uh, it's the easiest way to demonstrate this. I'm going to grab some things I'll need. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that. It's going to start at zero steps before you've taken a step. Every time you turn the machine on, it'll zero your mileage, essentially. You'll be down a one. Um, and then it's always going to uh, show a number on the screen. And that's when you'll be able to see this uh, this thing here. So there we are. So this in the corner is a micro bit. It's a physical little machine um, that you can you know, actually borrow them from libraries. We have... have uh, hundreds in the Hampshire Library catalog, so you can always borrow those from your local library or order them in, reserve them, and they're free to borrow. Um, and essentially, it's kind of like Scratch, but where Scratch all happens on your computer here, microbits are these little devices, so you can actually download the program you code, put it on the machine, and then see your code sort of exist in real life, um, and also do more physical things that you can't do just on a computer screen. Um, so the other thing I'm going to do here is if I'm going to add an input, because at the moment there's no way to interact with this with this thing, just a zero. So we're going to say, uh, pretend here that 
you've attached this to your to just your ankle. Uh, and then every time you take a step, um, it's going to change the steps by by one. Um, I actually haven't done that part, so I'm going to show the number that's on there. It currently says zero. I could say just ten or twenty, and then that would just show me the number twenty on my little device. Um, but instead, if I say steps here, then every time I take a step. Uh, which is essentially like the device shaking. So if you took a step, you know, you're up, down, up, down, up, that will cause a, a shake on the device, and that will take it up by one. So every time you take a step, it'll change what's on the display there. And you can, this little model here in the corner is a good way to, like, demonstrate it. But say this is actually physically attached to your ankle, that it just plugs into, like, uh, if you get the actual pack from uh, a library or just buy one yourself, it's a little, it contains the little machine and then a cable, and then just a little battery pack. And I think it's just double AA, A, triple A batteries. I think it's double A. Uh, and then you could attach that to your foot. And hey, if you want to know in your workday if you walked roughly a thousand steps, um, this would then display it on the side. You have a look down. There we are. That's how many steps you've done so far. Um, but so we've done that now. If we then switch over to JavaScript. All of this is filled in. We didn't do any of this by typing, but had we typed all this in, we would have reached the same conclusion. So it's kind of cool because this one is a kind of like a, a gateway from this to other coding languages where Scratch was all blocks. But here it's still blocks, but now we can see what these things did. So this basic forever function, that was this. That's, that's this block here. Everything here is that, that show number. Steps, steps is a variable that we created, so, and the pause there. So even if we went into here, we could edit this to 230. And we go back to blocks. Now, that updates at 230 milliseconds. So, it's a cool way to sort of like, you can make the blocks, but then if you want to tweak them, get very granular with your changes. You can mess with this. Um, so this is what we're doing at the moment in Code Club. Um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, the next thing we're doing is... Well, the next thing we might head on to is maybe HTML. And that's this thing. So this is all the coding of what basically web pages will be based on. Um, and this is on a program called Trinket. Um, and this is what you use to kind of... Um, this is where you code it on the left side, and the right side is kind of the output. So if we just do something very basic here, um, this body section here is to do with this. Well, it's, you know, everything that makes up the thing. Uh, so if we just copy what is here. So if I just do P, that is the start of a paragraph. In fact, in Trinket, it ends the paragraph as well for you there. It adds, like... Because everything, if you're going to put a P, you're going to need the slash P as well to close off the paragraph. So we are, we are learning to code in HTML. Kind of. And there we are. So if this was a web page, if you just put this out there, that is how that would display on a web page. Um, and so you can add things inside your paragraph. So, for instance, uh, you've probably seen on word presses and stuff like, you know, you'd see, you know what the icon for bold is, you know what the icon for italic is, and very similar to that. Rather than do a P uh, in these um, sections, if we added B, oh, it wants to, it wants to put that there. I could put that closure there. And now that is in bold. Or, alternatively, I could do I for italics, and that would be italic. Or, if I'm going to stress exactly what my name is. So now, underlined. So, uh, similar to how you would have done a word process stuff, I'm indicating sections are bold, italic, or underlined. 
but rather than highlighting it, click the thing. We're just giving little 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 bits of code in there uh, to determine stuff. So that hopefully gives you an idea of of some things we would do in a in a coding club, um, what you would learn along the way. Um, there's lots more projects. <laughs> there, are, this is so 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 very early on. Uh, as I say, I'm learning this stuff as I go. So we're squarely in this microbit territory at the moment. Um, and maybe we'll get to HTML. We'll see how it goes. But that hopefully gives you an idea of what um, coding products there are out there. Um, what we might be covering if you stick around with watching our videos. Um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and anyone wants to carry on, uh, we can see uh, more of our videos every Wednesday on Facebook. Uh, on our Hampshire Library's Facebook page, we're publishing around 5 o'clock a new video every week. So if you want to come learn it, you can. Uh, if you want to see old videos, uh, we've got previous playlists as well. So you can see all the videos that we've made so far uh, and, and catch up. And then, yeah. All right. Thank you very much.